Hi folks, it is a concerned Dr. Miskoff and it is April 8th, 2020, about 5 p.m. And I hope everybody's doing well. I had uh, my one day off here out of seven. I just kicked back and relaxed. Did a little reading today on a product called Naltrexone, but more specifically the low dose version or LDN. And the fact of the day or night is, is that Naltrexone itself was FDA approved in 1984 at a 50 milligram uh, dose uh, this was to be an antagonist to opioids or for heroin addiction. Uh, so for addicts of opiates, uh, this was a product, again, approved in 1984. Um, but about 30 years ago, uh, there was a, a, a Dr. Uh, Ian Zagon, Z-A-G-O-N, and Dr. Bernard Bahari. Uh, these are some of the earlier researchers and clinicians with LDN. And what they found is that it had a unique um, effect on the immune system and that it could somehow upregulate the immune system through uh, endorphins, or what we call metenkephalin, and that uh, endorphins are sort of the, the body's own natural uh, opioid, if you will. Uh, so uh, that by giving micro doses of naltrexone, hence the term LDN, or low-dose naltrexone, somewhere in the 3 milligram to 4.5 milligram zone, that you could upregulate uh, receptors on immune cells and cells in the body and actually create more endorphin and more receptors and, and probably more action at those receptors. Uh, so that's kind of the, the intro to naltrexone. And, and you know, again, that was 50 milligrams. When I've spoken to psychiatrists and neurologists about the product, um, people in the psych field, uh, you know, at that dose, it wasn't you know, that, that well tolerated by many. A lot of side effects, uh, grogginess, a sort of zombie effect, if you will, has been described at least anecdotally to me. But at the 3 to 4.5 milligram dosing, uh, there seems to be uh, quite little in the uh, realm of side effects. And they talk about vivid dreaming. Uh, some have even spoken and written of um, uh, potentially having positive side effects in regards to ectoderm or hair growth, uh, potentially uh, more nail growth. Uh, so at any rate, it seems like at these micro doses, it, it's quite safe. And there are some cautionary notes. Uh, it was looked at for multiple sclerosis, uh, carcinomas, all different types, uh, autoimmune diseases, Crohn's disease, irritable bowel, HIV, and the list goes on and on. I would uh, reference the low-dose naltrexone. Again, that's N like Nancy, A-L-T-R-E-X-O-N like Nancy E um, homepage. So the low, uh, it's low-dose naltrexone homepage. Uh, I believe it's .org. And you can check that out. And there's um, sort of the history and all the diseases or disorders that there's antidote uh, for that helping. Um, uh, in regards to carcinoma, I actually did uh, uh, publish a, a case report on a younger man uh, who had lung carcinoma, non-small cell uh, lung carcinoma, and is now approaching the five-year mark for his non-small cell lung carcinoma, which it has been described anecdotally uh, to potentially suppress. Uh, those cancer cells via uh, the opiate receptors uh, that live on these on these cells. So it's thought that uh, carcinoma cells, in fact, have opiate receptors, and and, and the endorphin uh, receptor would be the opioid growth factor receptor, uh, OGFR. Uh, and again, uh, that there's some sort of mechanism where the immune system sort of blocks these receptors for several hours at the lower doses. And while it's blocked, there's an upregulation of the receptors, more endorphin is produced. And, um, and by doing this, you get this sort of burst of endorphin. It's recommended that it's taken between two and four in the morning when the normal endorphin rush would occur. And uh, in fact, I believe it was Dr. Ian Zagan uh, uh, who had studied this at Penn State and in animals and, and even healthy humans or normal humans were studied once and shown to have significant elevations in beta endorphin uh, compared to normal. Uh, in regards to Crohn's disease, Jill Smith was the researcher there, and it was published in the American Journal of Gastroenterology. This is going back a ways to 2006 or 7 uh, when they looked at that and studied Crohn's disease with colonoscopies and looking at the mucosa, and I believe they took biopsies, and what they found was that uh, two-thirds of those patients went into remission uh, just by taking low-dose naltrexone. This was an open-label study from 06. It was published, but that 89% overall had some benefit uh, with their Crohn's. And this, uh, she went on to, I believe, receive a grant for about $500,000 to study this in a more uh, placebo-controlled or a randomized fashion. 
so again, what controls the immune system? Uh, endorphins are thought to be the internal opioids that have a central role and beneficial role uh, in immune regulation on different cells. And these immune cells may include natural killer cells. Uh, we've heard that story before. Uh, B cells, T cells, all uh, bone marrow progenitor cells, and immature thymocytes. The New England, New England Journal of Medicine did publish in 03 uh, an article about opioid-induced immune uh, cells and, and how they, they felt that there was at least preclinical evidence that, there, uh, this was, um, that opiates were altering and causing development differentiation and, uh, and function of these immune cells. And that you get some sort of upregulation of endorphins uh, and enkephalin production uh, when you block that receptor. Um, Dr. Bahari uh, in the 1980s, sort of prior to uh, the launch of uh, HART or high, uh, the antiretrovirals for HIV, uh, did at least find and, and I believe publish. Uh, at least cases, and I think there was a paper back then that was presented at one of the, the international or national AIDS conferences showing that by taking low-dose naltrexone in that three to four and a half milligram dosing, um, and I forget the split on that, but you could actually preserve CD4 T cell counts uh, and, and even can keep them above, I believe, 200. Uh, don't quote me on that, but there was uh, stuff on the website about that. Uh, it's thought that the natural killer cells may play a role in apoptosis, uh, and Zagan, uh, again, had looked at that in a number of different carcinomas, seeing the endorphin and enkephalin rise, and how that can work on tumor cells that have opioid growth factor receptors. Uh, opioid receptors, again, blocked, and somehow natural killer cells can come in uh, and cause apoptosis of the, of the cell. In regards to cautions about it, uh, it is a anti-opiate, so it is pretty much the opposite of an opioid that, or opiate that you would take, uh, such as even Ultram or morphine, uh, dextromethorphan for, uh, uh, for cough, Percocet or Regesix, codeine, preps, anything like that. Uh, you need to be careful, and if you're having surgery, of course, now with COVID-19, uh, all elective surgeries are off. But uh, if you are pre or post-op or perioperatively and you're going to be taking narcotics or taking them before, uh, then you would have to stop uh, LDN prior to that. I, I imagine several days uh, would be safe. Uh, Hashimoto's thyroiditis is also listed as an autoimmune component of thyroid disease that LDN has uh, at least anecdotally helped uh, many. Uh, low doses from about 1.5, and this can be done in an elixir. The compounding pharmacies are listed on that website I mentioned, low dose, low dose uh, dot org. Uh, and uh, the one that I've utilized for patients is Skips down in, in Florida, uh, but there are others listed on there that can compound this even as a, a, a liquid, um, I believe from 1.1 milligram or 1.5 milligrams, where 1.5 is thought to be the lowest effective dose that's been looked at uh, all the way up to the four and a half. But with Hashimoto's, you may get an, a, an immediate response and have to therefore check your thyroid hormones and reduce them uh, so you avoid hyperthyroidism. Uh, when looking at patients with liver disease, this does go through the liver. Uh, there was a cautionary note at the naltrexone dose of 50 milligrams, but it was studied and they didn't see real liver toxicity to about 300 milligrams. And again, you're using uh, somewhere between the one and a half to 4.5 milligram zone. And if you have organ transplantation or on chronic immunosuppressants, this could in fact, or at least by theory, uh, affect those immunosuppressants. So uh, I would not use it in those cases. Again, with any prescription or even over-the-counter that we've discussed, the disclaimer is uh, you would have to speak to your clinician or, or practicing uh, physician uh, or extender and, and get clearance on that. This, this one particularly needs a script uh, faxed in or sent in or called into a pharmacy uh, to get it compounded in one that does it and has some practice with it. I know Skips has been doing it for a long time, and they've given us very good quality, so um, that's one that I, I feel comfortable using and the patients have been satisfied. So again, this is a, is this the wonder drug? Who knows? Uh, but it, it certainly warrants more study. I know that there's a company called Immune Therapeutics, I believe, uh, and they did get approval for this in Nigeria by the, uh, at least the, that country's um, uh, uh, society that approves. Um, and they have used it for HIV disease there as a product called Lodinol. Uh, I know there's been some talk about, you know, immune boosting for COVID-19 and whether or not this can truly prevent it is, is up for debate. 
uh, in clinical trials would be needed just like anything else, just like with hydroxychloroquine. Uh, will boosting the immune system be able to fight this off? Can it do something more? Uh, uh, you know, again, it's now being discovered that with COVID-19, there's something in the, in the red cell and iron is involved. And, and uh, uh, there is a study, uh, as I mentioned the other day on the vlog, uh, going on overseas where they're looking at a iron binder uh, for, uh, for this. And that seems uh, at least promising. Uh, but, you know, once the storm, the cytokine storm uh, happens, you're really looking at drugs to block those IL-6s, IL-1s, um, complements, et cetera, that we've discussed. So you really want to get at it in the beginning and prevent it from happening uh, rather than chasing that storm. I'd like to dedicate tonight's vlog to my good buddy, Michael H., uh, out of Vermont. Uh, I know he's a, a big fan of LDN. And uh, everybody have a safe and great night. Have a good Passover.